Right, in this recording what I'd like to deal with is the third area of Mahara, and that's the share and network area. Now this has lots and lots of potential. As I said earlier, Mahara is all about a private area, so it's up to you who you network with and how you create groups and pull people together. Um, you can do this entirely through Mahara. So in this case, what we're going to do is to have a look at how you create a group. Um, so let's go into the group area. So simply at the tab at the top, I can go into my groups. Now you'll see here I'm already a member of lots of different groups, some of which I've set up myself and others are um, open groups that I've joined. Creating a group is as simple as clicking the Create Group button. Give your group a name. Uh, and a description, which can include a picture or a logo, and decide the settings for your group. Um, so here we can decide just the, the nature of membership. Is it open, request, or invite only? Um, we can also decide who has control of what happens within that group. So we might want to share um, editing pages across the group. Um, and we can also decide how visible the group is and by default here, you can see that members of a group will be notified when there are changes to that group via the Mahara system, not by email, but just via the Mahara system in their activity stream on the dashboard. So I've got plenty of groups set up, so I will cancel this and we'll go and have a look at the nature of a group. So at the moment, what we've got here, here's a group that isn't... Um, it's brand new, it's empty at the moment. So I've, I've only recently created this. Under the tabs within the, the group itself, you can see there's an area that will list all the members of the group. Uh, there's an area of forums where we can create forums and have discussions together. There's a pages area if we create groups, uh, create pages on a topic, for example. Uh, I can share those resources with members of the group and I can also share files across the group as well. So quite a powerful set of, of features really within your group. Uh, in order to invite additional members, I come under the Members tab and I can send multiple invitations. Now, in order to do that and invite people who are in the system, they will need to have clicked through Moodle into Mahara so that Mahara knows that they are there. Uh, so they will have needed to do that once in order to be visible. Um, so you, you certainly would need to invite them very clearly um, to step into Mahara in the first place. You'll then see in, the, in Mahara a list of those people who are available and also a search box if you want to check and see if somebody is in that list. So let's just show you how that would work. Okay, and then I would click here in order to get this person invited. The groups are really powerful and useful, particularly if you want to get support for your language learning. So you could have, for example, native speakers of Russian learning languages, learning other languages. And, and that would enable you to have discussions in your first language with other language learners and to share tips and tricks and to make sure that everybody can help each other. So using the group function can give you lots and lots of social networking opportunities that will be supportive of your learning.